What's up everybody? Today we're reviewing the 2019 Mercedes-Benz E300 with 241 horsepower and it's a lot faster than that number suggests. So let's take a look. First I want to say how good I think this car looks. I think this silver with the black mirrors and the black roof looks really good. I think these wheels look really nice as well. They're at 245, 45, 18 and I think the wheel design looks really good. And I think the brakes with the drilled rotors look really good as well along with the nice brake caliper that says Mercedes Benz on it. Another thing that I really like is the headlight design. I think it looks really nice driving down the road with these nice daytime running lights. The little LED strips look really good on both sides. I also really like this grill. I think it looks really nice. And like I said, I really like this silver color. I think the silver, the black, and these wheels all come together and make it look really nice, premium, and just an overall really good look when you're spending about $60,000 on this vehicle. This car does have the sunroof. I think it looks really nice. Also comes with the black roof, which looks really good as well. It's just a characteristic of the car that makes the whole overall design look really good. I really like these nice lines along the car. I think those look really good. I think the lines make the car look more muscular and more like a sports car, but it's also a luxurious car, but it's the two in one, which I think is really nice. This car comes with a 360 degree camera, which I'll show you right here, as well as it also has these sensors in the front and rear bumper that can help detect collisions and it can help you in tight spaces when you're trying to go forward or backward into a spot. The parking sensors in collaboration with the 360 degree camera as well as the front and rear camera is really nice. Just gives you the confidence to go forward and backward into spaces without hitting other things. So we've talked about the exterior and a little bit about the performance. So let's get into the interior and see where this car really shines. So this car does have keyless access. So make sure you just have your key in your pocket. You can walk up to the door, put your hand behind here and it opens. That's really nice. So if you got stuff in your hands or uh, you just don't want to get your key out of your pocket, you don't have to click the unlock button. You just come in and put your hand behind any of the four door handles and it unlocks the car. Just like you can unlock it from any of the four door handles, you can also lock it with any of the four door handles. You can see this little square kind of box. You just put your finger on it and it locks the car. One way to tell it's locked, it does a little bit of a beep and also the mirrors go in as well. When you first step into the E300 or just any Mercedes, you can smell that just signature Mercedes leather smell. And I think that's really nice because it's basically across all the lines. Even if you have a 2003 Mercedes, they all have that same leather kind of smell and I think that's really cool and it's kind of like a nice premium touch that Mercedes does. Besides that, when you step in, you just realize what a beautiful kind of instrument cluster and just dash and the door panels and just everything is so premium. It's so nice to just step in here and just relax. All the touch points are really good. They're all soft touch points. The aluminum and wood trim looks really good and it all comes together very well with this black leather interior. On the buttons on the instrument cluster right here in the middle, there's a little piano black touches, which I could see being somewhat of an issue if you have like oily hands or whatever. They would get dirty easy uh, just because it's the piano black. I know some people don't like the piano black, but when it's clean, it looks really good in my opinion. I know some people complain about the piano black but I personally I do like it when it's clean when it's dirty all you got to do is just take a microfiber rag and just wipe it off and it comes right off but it's definitely no big deal having that I really like the way that this door looks it's got that beautiful textured wood and the Burmeister sound system in this car is really nice but not only does it sound really nice it also looks really nice I'll show you that on all four doors right here however also the seat adjustment buttons on both sides both look really nice and that's just the Mercedes touch it's that little bit of extra you're not only paying more for the name but you're also paying for these little finishes that Mercedes does that makes their cars just that much better in my opinion. That's why they've been around for so long being a premium brand. Even like the door handle looks really nice. See, that's just another cool little touch is the engine stop start button flashes. So when you start it, cluster lights up. I really like these window switches. I think they got a really nice feel to them. All automatic up and down in the front and the back. I think that's really nice. Up. They're all coming up. That's really nice. And then if you notice on the car, when you bring it all the way up, it slows down at the top. So there's not that thud. Like, you know, when you put up windows on some cars and it goes all the way up and it goes boom. Well, it doesn't make that noise because it goes fast, fast, fast. And then once it gets to the top, it slows down. So I think that's really nice. That's just a nice Mercedes touch as well. Another thing I would like to add is that it has an analog clock. 
which is also just another cool touch that Mercedes does. But this car does a very good mix of analog and digital. With this 12.3 inch screen, I think it's really nice. I know an option that you can get on these cars, depending on which trim level you get, you can get dual 12.3 inch screens. So you have the digital instrument cluster right here, which is really cool, but this car does not come with it. However, I think these analog gauges look really good and just nice and premium. You do have that digital display in the middle where you can display fuel economy your odometer your speedometer your trips and your range and stuff like that which is really nice i think that's really cool that you can do that if it was my car i would definitely have it on the speedometer but it's not my car and they have it set to the odometer so that's the way it's going to stay however these buttons on the right and the left of the steering wheel they're almost like a smartphone so they're they're touch screen so you're not rolling anything you're just touching it up and down and it's just like a smartphone you just scroll through the screens like that and then if you want to select something, all you do is push down on it like that. And then it gives you the option. You also have a back button and a home button on the steering wheel right here where you can go through that kind of stuff and you can bring your trip information, driver assist, and your navigation all through that screen in the middle between the RPM gauge and your speedometer on the right here. I like this fuel gauge as well as your coolant temperature right here. I think those are really nice. So like the hotter your car gets, the bigger the kind of squares get as well as the more gas that your car has uh the bigger the squares are so the less gas the smaller the squares get and so on and so forth and like i said you have the touch button on this side of the steering wheel you also have it on your right side of the steering wheel as well so the left side corresponds with this screen right here the right side corresponds with this screen right here so you can go through the menu and stuff right here so like this you scroll up and down and it makes a cool little uh, sound it's almost like the sound of when you type on your iPhone uh, it kind of makes that kind of click 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 which is really cool it just gives you a little bit of feedback so you know that you're switching in between things so you can go between your phone your radio your media and your vehicle and uh, system settings and stuff like that all through this button right here but it gives you basically three or four options to control that screen you have this right here so when you're driving it makes it easier but you also have this touchpad right here and it also knows that uh, when you're not using that you can use this uh, scroll wheel right here that also controls it as well so it gives you many options on how you want to control this screen so i think that's really nice and it just gives you as many options or whatever you feel comfortable with doing at a certain time so if you're stopped and you want to use the scroll wheel by all means use that or if you want to use this touchpad while you're stopped you can do that too uh, this touchpad gives you a little bit of force feedback so when you go in between, it makes that noise. It's almost like what you use on your MacBook Pro or whatever MacBook you have with the touchpad. It's that same kind of vibe. This car does have uh, Wi-Fi connectivity, but that is an extra. You do have to pay monthly for that. This car has Apple CarPlay, which I'll show you right here. So this car just has all the features that you really need. This isn't the fully loaded one, but this isn't the base model. This is basically the middle of the road, which honestly is all you really need. I mean, this car is basically as nice as you can get, in my opinion. All the extra little doohickeys, like the 360 camera, the backup camera, it's got the sensors, it's got adaptive cruise and stuff like that. To switch gears, you just use this stock right here. So to go into drive, you just push down like that. To go into neutral, just give it one little push up. Now we're in neutral. To go into reverse, you go all the way up. Now we're in reverse and you can see the 360 camera right here and you can also see your backup camera right there and you can configure what you want to see on this side of the screen uh, right here using either uh, the scroll knob or this uh, button right here which is really nice and you can also use this touchpad here as well so to put it in park you just push the button on the stock right there now we're in park and the emergency brake comes on every time you put it in park so that's just another uh, added safety feature that is really nice. Talking about performance, so when you're driving this car, this car does not come with a dual clutch. It has a 9G transmission from Mercedes, but it's almost dual clutch performance in my opinion. Uh, the shifts are instant and they're also really smooth. You can't even tell when you're shifting gears, so I think that's really nice. These paddle shifters right here, they're not the best material if I'm being totally honest. It's just a plastic, a black plastic material. However, uh, when you click upshift or downshift, it's pretty dang instant and it's smooth too. The downshifts are really smooth coming through the paddle shifters. Stepping into the rear, sitting behind myself, I'm five foot nine and I have plenty of leg room as well as 
tons of headroom, that textured wood that's in the front, as well as these beautiful Burmeister speakers follow through to the rear. And this nice little trim, aluminum trim piece along the bottom just makes the rear of the car look really good. I know some manufacturers make the front look really good and then they forget about the rear seat. That is not the case with this car. I think they made it look really nice and premium. As well as you have this nice looking window switch right here. Like I said, automatic up and down and the wood uh, trim around it just makes it give you that nice premium feeling that I'm talking about that you get with a Mercedes. You also have two cup holders right here. You also have this nice little storage spot right here for phones and stuff. It's actually a lot bigger than what was in the A6 that I reviewed. You have these nice door pockets for whatever you need, like water bottles and stuff like that. So they didn't cut any corners. They give you tons of storage space with the door pockets and uh, this storage space in the center armrest as well as you obviously have map pockets in the back for whatever little thin pieces of paper or whatever you wanna put back there. Right here, you have a 115 volt outlet. Uh, you only have the two prong, so it's not a three prong, so you can't really get like a extension cord or a PC charger, which kind of stinks, but it is what it is. You also have your 12 volt outlet right there. One thing that this car does lack is the USB ports in the back. There are none. And I'm actually pretty disappointed that you're spending 60 plus thousand dollars on a vehicle and you don't have USB ports in the back. I know it's like a minor issue, but it's something that I would expect. I know like the Audi A6 had it. So, and my Lincoln MKZ has it and that's a lot less money. So I am kind of disappointed that Mercedes does not have it. I'm sure maybe it's an option or something that this car might not have, but I think it should come standard regardless of whether you have the option or not. So that's one gripe that I do have in the back seat of this car. So that's just about it for the rear comfort and amenities. Let's move on to what's next. All right, let's go for a drive. To go into drive, you just push the stock down and you're in drive and we're ready to go. Pulling onto the highway in comfort mode, uh, it's just nice, comfortable, and it's got the power that you need, and the shifts, like I said, are just silky smooth, uh, almost dual clutch speed, and just the ride is really nice. And one thing you'd notice, we're going about 55, 60 miles an hour, it's just nice and quiet in here and I think that's really nice obviously that's what you're paying for when you get a Mercedes but I just I'm a huge fan of the quietness and when you're on a long road trip the humming of the tires does begin to get annoying after a few hours and with the sound system going and just the insulation that Mercedes put into this car I don't think you'll have any problem going from uh, Virginia all the way down to Florida, for example. And it's just a nice ride. The brakes are good, uh, acceleration is good. This is just an inline four cylinder with 241 horsepower, but I mean, it gets up and goes like you need it to. It's definitely not lacking on power. And it's just a really enjoyable car to drive. If you're looking for a daily driver in the $60,000 range and you want like a nicely equipped uh, car, if you wanna, and if you want a nicely equipped car, you're looking at probably an A6, a 5 Series, and this car, uh, the E300. In between the A6 and the E300, I personally, I do think that this car is just a lot more comfortable. That's just my opinion, so obviously some people are going to have differing opinions. Maybe the Audi does look a little bit better in the front, but I think that this car also looks really good in the front. So. It's all up to personal preference, but I feel like the interior on this car is just a step above the Audi, just with the wood and just the Burmeister sound system looks really nice. I know Audi uses the Bang & Olufsen, and um, it does sound really good, don't get me wrong. It sounds really good, and this sounds really good too, but just the finishing touches that Mercedes does with the Burmeister sound system and just the beautiful aluminum on the speakers just gives it that little bit of an extra edge on the interior looks and I mean the sound is just about equal but it just it gets that extra edge just with the look it's just those finishing touches that makes the car just look that much more premium coming up to a stoplight right here let's check out the zero to 60 we'll put it in sport plus mode for obviously the best performance that you were gonna get and let's see when the light changes will go Obviously, like you saw in the video, not the fastest, but I mean, it's all you need. You don't need anything much more than that. Um, and obviously, I think people who get this car are looking more about safety, comfort, 
and just a good daily driver that gets good gas mileage. So, I mean, you can't really go wrong with the E300. It's got all the power that you really need. And if you want more power, if you want a V6 or a V8, you can get the E43 or you can get the uh, E63. Obviously the E63 is a whole nother beast. I've never driven it, but I can only assume how fast that car is from the videos that I've seen with a zero to 60 in about three seconds. That's pretty, that's insane for a sedan that weighs about 3,800 pounds. However, just this car, it's not like the sportiest car, but the brakes on this are really good. And that's something that I've noticed after driving it for about 10, 20 minutes, you notice right off the bat, it's just how good these brakes are. So I can only imagine what the E63 or even the E43 brakes are like. Some of the safety features that this car has, obviously you have blind spot warning. You also have automatic braking, which is nice. So, I mean, obviously if you're not paying attention, which you should always be paying attention, the car will automatically brake for you and try to prevent a crash. One thing that Mercedes does do with these E-classes is it can sense a collision before it happens. And right before it happens, it pumps in pink noise, which is supposed supposedly supposed to lessen the effects of a crash so and it's just those features that just separates Mercedes from other brands when it comes to safety and stuff like that and I can only assume that this family bought this car because of the safety and they just had uh, a baby so I'm assuming that safety is a priority for them and they chose this car I mean you can just feel how solid this car is and how safe it feels it's just solid and I'm sure it's got all the airbags that you need like side curtain airbags and stuff like that and I mean all that stuff is necessary I mean you hope to never use it but it's nice that it's there when you do need it all right guys that's it for today's review if you like what you saw please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe i'm trying to hit 1,000 subscribers by june of 2021 and i do really do think that we can do it so please if you know anybody that's looking for an a6 or an e300 or a bmw 5 series please send them this video and show them that this mercedes is really nice and i really do recommend it if i had to choose Shoes. I've driven the A6 and I've driven this. Honestly, if I had to choose, my honest opinion is I would probably go with the Mercedes. I really do like this interior just a little bit better. I think it just looks a little bit nicer than the Audi. And I think it might ride a little bit better. However, the Audi is a little bit quicker. So if you are looking for a quicker car, maybe the Audi is the way to go for you. But if I had to choose between the two, I haven't driven a, five, a new 5 Series yet. I would probably choose this car between the two. So like I said, please give this video a thumbs up and please subscribe. I'm really, really gunning for a thousand subscribers by June. And I really do think that we can make it happen, but I can only make it happen with your help. So please subscribe, give it a thumbs up, like I said, and I'll see you guys in the next video.